Oh my god, it literally is a drop pop. What is that? A peacekeeper? Ah, uh, yes, the peacekeeper, which is a biped with two grenade launchers up top. Hello everyone, I'm Grey Show17, and I'm here to finally talk about Starship Troopers Terran Command Urban Onslaught. It's only been two months, you know, better late than never. Uh, but this DLC for the Starship Troopers Terran Command main game uh, features uh, a host of new units, and after finally beating it, uh, having the time, I would say I recommend it. I, I know that's jumping the gun, but seriously, uh, I know I was sort of a little bit more mixed. I sort of recommended Raising Hell. It was about $10 expansion, um, so slightly cheaper than this one, but with less missions, less units, and even though I think the story in that one is still good, at least it offers, it's still it, that Starship Troopers feel. This one is... It's interesting because it's a little, I don't say happier, but it's a its a different note than the other star, two Starship Trooper games where it, you definitely have that cynical edge to the other two, not DLC, but also the main game. Here, um, I will say it, it's different and let's get into it. So what does Urban Onslaught offer and why do I like it so much? Well, first off, not only do you get um, more units and not just more army units, which are very different from the base game, while I do like the uh, added uh, like Mar uh, Marauder and other things like that in the main game and then the mercenaries in Raising Hell, right? The next step was, okay, how do you make this separate? Well, add an Air Force and Artillery units. Sold. Uh, even though they're not in, especially the Artillery, in as many uh, missions as I would like them to be, uh, they're still... In, they're still enough uh mission variety and especially with the air units i really enjoyed the air units and to counter that the bugs have new air units uh these like bumblebee-esque bugs as well as a giant tanker bug that almost has a hornet's nest vibe in its back that spawns these things plus nests that are scattered around the environment so you might have air units but you're still going to be up against this threat and just flying around the city knocking out artillery bugs with those aircraft is just a great it's just ah oh, yes payback but again it offers a new tactical edge or a different edge to the game um other things like i said the artillery units and most importantly the more distinctly for this campaign it's in a city and you actually get to play police so yes protect and serve wait check your fire they immediately shot him it's like, don't worry, I'll help you kill the bugs. Oh, wait. What? And I know there's a lot of things about, man, the police in the United States are pretty decked out with military. No, these ones are abs like just taking it to the next level. You want a like a bipod mech that just fires grenades? Sure, why not? Or like, a, a, and I, my favorite is a drone that you can send out that's essentially a suicide bomber drone uh, that just easily knocks out large hordes of bugs or they'll just follow it. <laughs> It, again, there's all sorts of interesting new units on top of the basic units. So to continue with Raising Hell, it's like, okay, let's show a different side of this world. And it, I think it works. Again, the cop perspective, I really enjoyed, especially from the psionic perspective that they slowly give. Um, and again, I do like the military and the police interactions with this, especially the, the main officer. Uh, again, the only thing I will say is the campaign is nothing you know, out there. It's not like an emotional story, in my opinion. It's just, it's good enough to serve the, the scenario of these bugs sieging a city. And it's very different than the Stalingrad-esque sort of map that they did in the main game. Uh, it, it, it has a different feel to that, and especially because you're in it so much. You get a lot of different environments. But I will say as a gripe, one issue is the vents or the uh, elevator system can be a little cumbersome trying to move units from one building to another or from up from floor to floor. There's a little bit more verticality in this because of the buildings and it's, you know, appreciated. But again, I did find that stuff annoying, to be very honest, uh, with how just clicking to manually move units. The game itself, again, if you've played the game, it's good. Uh, it's not the most re like responsive RTS, but it's good enough, and when you have those elements where you have to manually click every time for those elevators, to me it just got annoying fast. Um, that's probably the weakest aspect. But I never felt like the mission design or anything like that was really hard. No, 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 no! They just won't let up. Yeah, you're about to die. All right, uh, we're gonna need to go back a little more. Uh, or let me rephrase that. I was playing on hard, not not the hardest difficulty, but the second hardest difficulty, and I still had a good time with it. 
Um, but yeah, no, I never felt the game super punishing. Kind of like with that curve that you got in the main game. This didn't feel like that. I played through the whole thing, and while the end mission, they're just sending bugs like crazy. That's the point. It's the final end, final boss to get this brain bug. But still, I never felt it was like, okay, how the hell do I figure this out? No, I was able to figure out a strategy and push through um, at the cost of many troopers, but that's the point of the game. But yeah, no, for $12, and essentially you get almost half of the campaign from the main game. You get more units. So in total, I believe there's seven new units. Uh, I believe four new bugs. Oh, and I forgot to mention, also new turrets. That's another component. So there's a lot of areas where you're on defense and you can use material to make these turrets. Um, some are mortar turrets, your base turret, your anti-tank turret. You got all sorts of new defensive customization, customization options. Try to hold the enemy back. My favorite is the missile turret that's just firing salvos at the bugs long range. Again, because it's just like hitting large groups and helps break them apart. Slow fire rate, but still very helpful, especially against the artillery bugs. But yeah, no, I I just enjoyed it. I thought it was a very solid uh, DLC. After the uh, Terminator video, people are like, oh, I guess he doesn't like RTS. It's like, no, I do. I have problems with that game. And while I have some nitpicks with some of the, and also there's a, a couple, uh, not in-game bugs, but uh, in terms of the arachnids, but actual like gameplay bugs where some units are just like, moving a little sporadically for my liking or just a little bit off. But uh, other than that, I enjoyed it. Uh, oh, and maybe the voice acting could be a little better. But overall, again, I would recommend it, especially if you like the main game. Go drone. Run! 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 Go! 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 But hey, what do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Have you played it? Um, and also, is there any RTS that you'd recommend? Right now, on my list to try is uh, Rattenreich, and, uh, also possibly Tactical Breach Wizards, uh, for RTSs, as well as a bunch of others. So I'm trying to get to more RTSs and have more videos about thoughts and gameplay. This is more impromptu because it's so late, but I wanted to get out there. So anyway, let me know what you think. Thank you all for your time. And, uh, yeah, hope to see you on the next video. Hello, everyone. This is GrayShot117. And before y'all go, let me give a special shout out to Patreon supporters, JoeyG240, Malab, Big Cooch, Aferia, Ace, Pyro Shark, Tony B, 95, Epic Pleb. Thank you all for your incredible support in helping me grow my channel and support my channel and everything I do. Thank you, and to the rest of you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.